Are we ready? Yucca, I think I'm pronouncing your name. Yucca, yucca, uka, yucca. How do I pronounce? So tell me, tell me. Huh? How do you pronounce? Yucca. Yucca. I wasn't bad. Yucca. Okay. You all know him. I do. Thanks. Well, this nice way to perform, I think, is, uh, gives uh, new inspiration. Um, what I wanted to talk first is about this conception of uh, conducting and uh, why those people still exist in, in the modern society. Um, why do the orchestras exist? That's another question. Why the culture exists? That's the third question. And um, so maybe in 20 minutes it's not possible to touch all those things, but I start from conducting and uh, trying to ask the question, what is conductor? And uh, uh, the best answer, actually, that I have uh, heard came from a distinguished conductor, Eric Leinsdorf, in his book. Um, the title of the book is um, Composer's Advocate. And uh, I think that is pretty true. That's, that's about it, what the conductor's role is uh, very simple. Uh, he has to promote and serve the composers that he picks, uh, picks uh, um, to the repertoire. And um, why does he pick certain composers and leave some other, uh, out? And that's a question of, of the culture that the con conductor comes from. And if I could... Uh, describe uh, the musical world in, in uh, very general terms, I would uh, probably take three cultures in classical music. And unfortunately, uh, classical music is very old world uh, phenomena. And since uh, we still go back to Bach and uh, Beethoven and uh, Brahms, uh, the whole thing about classical music is, is re representing the major cultural um, um, emphasis from, from the old world. And then how it progressed in, in um, uh, Asia, um, America, South America. I think still with, with this Western classical music, those are the reflections of, of uh, what happened in Europe. Uh, between uh, 1650 and uh, today. Um, I think the orchestra music, uh, the big orchestral music is uh, written from uh, 1750 to 1890. And that is the main core of, of the whole um, repertoire that the orchestras are performing. So what do, did the Germans want to express with, with the music? Yes, I think that they wanted to express something uh, very philosophical, ver very deep, uh, what they uh, think about existence and the purpose of life. They, they seem to have uh, worked on this concept for so long time that that's what I call the German, German tradition of music. Um, in a way, that tradition became the most important in all, all music, but because the big geniuses like Bach, uh, Beethoven, uh, we think that they are still the most powerful um, uh, Rembrandts and, and, uh, and uh, Leonardos of, of, of classical music. The other main tradition probably is the French, and for music, French uh, was always seeking for uh, imaginative pleasure. And uh, therefore, the French music doesn't agree with the German pattern. It doesn't really um, talk about the same things. The, uh, the French 
idea for music is, is uh, bring in musical colors a fantasy uh, kind of stimulation to the life. Uh, what was the third one? We can argue whether that's the Slavic or the British. I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue. I think for the British, music and the purpose of uh, music has always had something to do with, uh, with um, the power of um, grandiose, which means the um, uh, enhancement of, of, of glory and uh, energy. So if we th think these two blo three blocks in, in classical music and try to uh, follow the, tr uh, the trends, of course, then we have American music that is relatively new, but uh, still very much coming from, from uh, the British region stimulated by American uh, musical uh, uh, in heritage coming from jazz, uh, from big bands. I'm trying to lead this thing into the second subject of mine, is what, what is a uh, Finnish conductor doing in Toronto? <laughs> which uh, which um, musical aspirations wants he bring to, to this culture? And of course, for me, the first question is, uh, what is the culture in, in Toronto, and what kind of culture there is? Where, where, where are the roots? Uh, where, where's the need for, for a symphony orchestra, for pure classical music? Uh, which kind of audience we want to serve by performing? And um, of course, um, that has been always quite a um, delicate topic to me. Uh, when I first came to Toronto, I got the Lufthansa board book, which is the magazine, airline magazine. And there, there was this uh, description of Toronto. That was back in 93, I think. And they said that um, Toronto is an answer to what the world could be in 50, 100 years, because it um, has been able to amalgamate and mix all the cultures together, giving the all, all the cultures the necessary independence and space. And I read that article in German language and said, wow, I'm going to uh, a place that, that uh, it's, it's uh, so full of different uh, cultural impulses that uh, it, it, it should be a very exciting place to, to, to really um, do music. And uh, it certainly has been. But still, when we try to get in the bottom of the matter, um, which culture is dominating in this city at the moment? I can't answer that uh, from my background. Uh, uh, all the, are these all cultures here equal? That's another question that I can't answer. Uh, can we see a trend that this all, the whole thing is, is leading towards? Uh, can we guess what this place is going to be in 50 years? I don't, I don't really see. And it, it's, it's going to be very exciting, I think, to, to see, see what kind of uh, changes are going to happen, which, uh, which cultures bring the most of the energy uh, to the, the new, new life. Um, I'm guessing, I think most of the people that I know are guessing uh, what, is, what is going to happen here. Um, with classical music, I certainly can tell you that uh, I wish that all these cultures that are here existing uh, in, in a very peaceful way, um, I don't see very much exchange uh, between the Caucasian and Asian and African uh, uh, influences or, or the groups of people that are uh, coming from that origin. So my wish 
would be to somewhat uh, clarify in, in this culture that what kind of exchange is possible between different, uh, different uh, elements of it. Uh, certainly, I believe that there is uh, such a need for performances of Beethoven, Brahms, Mahler, Shostakovich, um, Sibelius, um, that most of the people, if they are quite open and honest, they will get some kind of uh, stimulation listening to that music, some kind of uh, disturbance. And that was the third theme that I want, wanted to touch. What is the balanced person? What is balanced culture? What is a culture that is not balanced, doesn't want to be balanced? And if, if we really think about that, uh, can, we, can we tell in what kind of culture do we live today here? Uh, somebody told me that um, if you think about balanced personality, what, that, what does that mean? I think that is the main goal for all societies, to create a personality without too much disturbance. Um, and for artists, that is the end of creativity, to be balanced. And so, uh, in other words, I think to have a creative artist uh, too balanced is not really serving the purpose for our art. I think the artist and the duty for the artist is always to create disturbance wherever he is. And uh, to pick those things to create disturbance uh, in a very balanced culture uh, is a challenge for, for an artist because the art artist always wants to hit to crown somewhere to have the energy coming back from uh, his ability to, to shake, to disturb the, the peaceful existence. I think if you think of Beethoven, what he did in, in, in his world, he was absolutely uh, against uh, establishment. He was absolutely uh, against of fixed solutions to life. Um, I come from Finland, we had uh, Sibelius that was totally against fame and popularity. He had his better years with, uh, with uh, people, uh, helped a lot in the independence to, to identify the Finnish uh, nation. After that, he turned his back to, to, uh, to the people and thought that, okay, he can't go on with this, uh, with this, um, role as a national composer. So he had to uh, thrive towards much more independent uh, position in the culture. Uh, Schoenberg in Vienna was one of, one of the genius of the, this uh, past century. Um, he was hated by the audience, so, so that the, the, he was so hated then when he created Gure Leader, his uh, big work, and that piece suddenly became successful in 1913 when it was premiered. Uh, he turned his back to the audience and said to somebody that uh, my work um, became so successful that I started doubt this value. So he, here are examples of, of what an artist wants to do in society, what kind of uh, role there is for an artist. I'm talking about composers now, but also for performers and musicians. Uh, uh, I think we'd want to disturb the existence and, and the balance, um, but we have to hit ground. We have to identify the target, uh, which is a segment of the, of the culture, maybe a segment of the audience that really uh, feels that they are affected by our work. Um, 
My other challenge this year, of course, has been this, this uh, hole, but I'm not going to touch that, uh, that issue here. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that the hole gets fixed um, in, in, in relatively short time because there's a lot of, um, a lot of um, talks and goodwill to do something about it. I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm just um, talking about music and its importance. If you see young kids coming to concerts, I can uh, remember the days I went to hear first time a classical concert. I was uh, six, and I heard Mozart piano concerto by, uh, played by a famous Finnish pianist. And since that experience, I was, uh, I was labeled I knew that classical music is the only thing that I want to do in my life, to be able to one day perform those pieces that had uh, such a big impact on me. So I'm hooked. I'm, I know that there, there is a certain percentage of uh, uh, population, for people, that will feel the same way. And uh, actually, no matter what, how we promote our art, our um, cult, uh, the, the music that we perform, it's always going to be the same percentage of people that really feel for it and that really need that kind of stimulation. When I saw Mike Harris's uh, comment about uh, this terrible tragedy, um, like uh, the water is killing people, and uh, his suggestion that we should go back to basics and uh, stop building theaters and, and uh, convention centers because the clean water is now a priority. I started thinking, wow, that's really back to basics because uh, people have enjoyed classical music for three, four hundred years and drink, drank water <laughs> that doesn't really exclude each other. So, <laughs> so. So I think, uh, in short, these kind of statements are a little bit discouraging in, in, in uh, our city, our province. I think a uh, little bit hard sometimes to, to feel the energy hitting ground somewhere. I think uh, all the arts, they need, uh, they need support, not, not only money, but also intellectually. and, uh, and uh, acceptance to the fact that, uh, after all, art has to cause turmoil, uh, disturbance, and creativity. That's my speech, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. You gonna stay around?